guys, it's Jen, and as you can see, I don't have any foundation on today, and we're a little bit closer than normal because I wanted to do an updated foundation routine for you. This is for a liquid foundation look. I also have one on mineral makeup if you use that kind of makeup, which I'll link right over here in case you want to see it. But today, I wanted to do everything from the very beginning priming steps to finishing powder, what I do to get my face ready for liquid foundation makeup. So I hope you guys enjoy watching and let's go ahead and get started. My favorite first step after, of course, I do my skincare, sunscreen, all of that, I like to put on the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer, right? Huh? I love this guy. I've been repurchasing it many, many times and I've used it for years. This is a foundation primer that literally, I tried to test where I put it on half my face and not the other half and I saw such a difference at the end of the day. If you haven't tried this and you don't really like those slippy silicone foundation primers then I definitely recommend trying this one it also has I believe SPF 15 so you also get sun protection you also get some sun protection I'm just going to pump a bit of that on the back of my hand that's really about all that you need it's not very much it's not even an entire pump and it'll cover my whole face just fine so I'm just tapping this around my face and I'm literally just blending this in with my fingertips I find that I like using my hands for this step because the brushes can sometimes soak up the product and I don't want to do that with the primer. So I'm not putting this on too thick, but I do make sure it really gets a good layer anywhere where I have unevenness, any kind of fine lines, pores, and where I get a little more oily, which for me is the whole T-zone area right here, down my nose, around the sides of my nose, on top of my lip, and under my chin. Next, I wanted to move on to my favorite foundation of the moment. I'm obsessed with Kogendo Aqua Foundation, but if it's a little bit outside of your budget, because it is kind of of like a luxury foundation product, then I do recommend as a drugstore alternative the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Foundation. I've also used that one for years. I really love it and in conjunction with Hourglass it applies really beautifully. So that's also a great alternative but I'm going to be using this one. I would say this is a very true medium coverage foundation. If you're looking for something really thick and full coverage right out of the foundation bottle, you might be a little disappointed in this one, but I find that the medium coverage it gives, gives a really nice, perfect satin skin looking finish while still having coverage, and then any spots that don't show through, I cover with concealer and it just gives a really flawless, beautiful look. I'm just gonna shake this up, and using my favorite canvas, the back of my hand, I'm just going to do one pump for now. Again, with clean fingers, I'm going to dot this around my face. I don't do too much on the forehead. I like to do a little bit more in the cheek area. I tend to have some discoloration down here and right in the middle of my cheeks. So that's like where I like to add a little bit more. And then I'm going to use my favorite foundation brush at the moment, which is the Sephora Pro Flawless Airbrush. And I'm just going to buff this into my skin. And I'm going to go back in with one more pump. I'm not even gonna go over my forehead again because it really doesn't need a ton of coverage. But anywhere where I like a little bit more, I just quickly go in. For me, that's my cheeks and right around my mouth here. Underneath my nose where I get some redness, this will just give a light, natural, extra coverage layer. And then for this, I kind of like stippling it because it doesn't spread around the foundation as much, but it'll still kind of blend things in in a really natural way. You can alternately also use a beauty blender. For me, it's just a matter of cleaning it. If I feel like cleaning a foam beauty blender, then sometimes I'll use that. If I feel like cleaning a synthetic brush, then sometimes I like using that. So they both do a really, really beautiful finish. For around the nose area, I like taking the brush and I just kind of swirl it both ways so that it can get inside all of those pores and anything that's not really perfect, just to give it all coverage from all angles. <laughs> 
Once that's done, I like moving on to concealer and I actually like using two types of concealer. I have one for my under eye area to kind of brighten that up and I like it to be a little more liquidy because that'll kind of help with the hydration in the area. Your skin might tend to be a little bit drier with more fine lines in that area just because your skin doesn't produce a lot of oils underneath your eyes. So I am going to use the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer for here. For my acne and hyperpigmentation and the rest of my face, I like going for a slightly drier consistency. And these are actually pretty similar, but the NARS is slightly, slightly a little bit clingier. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and the shade I'm using is Ginger. The Maybelline Fit Me, I'm using the color Sand. Again, if you just wanna use one or the other, that is totally fine. There's nothing really wrong with that. This is just my personal preference of using two different ones, but they both actually work pretty well doing a single job. <laughs> I'm applying this in a little bit of a triangle and then just blending it out with my fingers because it kind of covers any dark under eye circles, but then it also gives a bit of a brightening effect because I can just blend it down onto the tops of my cheeks. Just as a tiny bit of a comparison, my NARS Ginger is slightly more yellow and slightly darker than the Fit Me in Sand. So it tends to match a little bit better just doing little spots like that. I just like going around anywhere that there are little red areas or little spots. Like I have this nice, beautiful zit friend that appeared overnight on my forehead. Anything like that, that I feel like from a distance I can see is standing out. I'll just go over that. Make sure you also bring your foundation down onto your neck so that that'll blend out any harsh edges or lines that your foundation has, especially if you're tanning in the summer or getting light in the winter and your foundation doesn't match you 100% perfectly. This will just kind of blend everything in. And it also covers up some of those little green veins that you might have. I have those on my neck, so I like to just hide that a little bit. Now that my foundation and concealer are all done, I wanna move on to setting that. And I like to use a translucent powder. My favorite one is the Tarte Smooth Operator, which I really love because it does a bit of oil control, but it also gives you a really soft airbrushed finish. I know a lot of people use a powder foundation to set their foundation, but my personal preference is that yes, you'll get more coverage that way, but usually you don't need it because the concealer should cover any imperfections you might have. And when you put a heavy powder on top, you really get that cakey effect and it just doesn't look as perfect and natural, especially in a super high HD environment with all these fancy cameras we have nowadays. So to get the most natural but full coverage finish, I actually use a powder that doesn't have coverage itself. It just kind of mattifies everything, sets everything in place, and makes your foundation last all day. So I'm just tapping this into the lid and then using a powder brush. This one is the Sephora Pro Precision Powder 59 brush, which I really love because it's big and fluffy. And I'm not actually going to powder my entire face. I find that in order to retain the really dewy look, I don't wanna get this too much in areas where I don't need it to be dry. So like the very tops of my cheeks right around my eyes, I still like having a little bit of hydration, especially as I'm getting older, I don't want to have any fine lines really stand out or dry out my skin too much. So I like taking this and you can just kind of like roll this on top of your face. That way it doesn't move around or displace any of the foundation that you've worked really hard to set in place. Also right here, I just like, patting it really lightly. For underneath my eyes, I like just kind of pinching the brush like this and making it like a fan brush and setting that right under my eye so I get a little bit more precision since we put quite a lot of concealer down there. This whole middle area gets really oily so I'm just gonna pat that all down. But I'm avoiding this kind of mask section of my eyes. Now just to finish off the rest of my face, I'm gonna do my normal routine of using a bit of blush and bronzer and then my look will be done. So this is the final look. As you can see, it's 
quite a bit different than the original. I think it's just like really a nice full coverage look. It looks really natural though, and it just kind of makes your skin look like it's perfect, even though it actually isn't. That's the goal. That's the goal with foundation, at least in my eyes. So I hope you enjoyed watching. If you found this helpful, then please, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to this channel to see more makeup videos. This is Jen and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, it's Jen and today I wanted to talk all about highlighters. If you've ever wanted to have that lit from within glow,